just to add. So Meg and I used to be enemies. Or So welcome to our All Abroad podcast. My name is Sweeney May, and today we are going to dive in to a very, very important and critical topic in our times, which is going to be LGBTQ, because October is LGBTQ awareness, well, LGBTQ history. History. Awareness Month. There you go. Um, one of our friends from the All Abroad podcast is definitely our representative and our, what do you want to call yourself, Meg? You are our the LGBT. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? The muse. The, the muse. I thought you said confused. I'm like, I don't think you're confused anymore. <laughs> Way beyond that. Beyond confusion now. So um, Meg is an LGBTQ muse from the All Abroad podcast. We're just going to call her that for this episode's sake. So our topic today is going to be about LGBTQ. And there's a lot to talk about LGBTQ because it's just a big topic, right? And it encompasses so many people. So let's start with a basic. And I'm going to put Meg on the spot. What does LGBTQ stand for, Meg? Let's start with that. L means lesbian, G as in gay, B bisexual, T transgender, Q queer. Queer. And and my personal question to you is, because you're going to be the subject, well, expert subject matter. I mean, that's a better position to put you. You're the expert <laughs> subject matter instead of a muse. <laughs> um, what falls under queer? That's my question. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but people who are who identify as non-binary, non okay, non-binary, they no. call themselves they, them. They don't necessarily want to be called in that binary of that heteronormative terms. So they don't want to call be called a he, a she, or her, or him, which is perfect for our language because we don't have <laughs> these pronouns in our language, right? And not to digress, but literally Filipinos, especially if they speak the language, we sometimes get he or she incorrectly because we don't have that specification with genders. We just call somebody they or that person. We don't really say... Sha. Sha. Yeah, so that's a term, Sha. Whatever. So <laughs> um, so that goes perfectly for our language. So I want to start off this um, episode with asking everyone, because what we want to do here is for our listeners to just be a little bit more informed after listening to this episode. So I'm going to start off by what did you remember in your childhood, in your younger years, back home in the Philippines, what did you remember about the lesbians and the gays and the bisexual? Like, what was the perception that we had for that category of people, gender? <laughs> and I'm still getting it right, too. So I'm, I'm not perfect at all. And I'm not all knowing of the LGBTQ like knowledge. So everything that we share here today is is just genuinely what we know and what we grow up, you know, knowing and what we know now. So but we're going to start with growing up. What did you guys know about LGBTQs back then? I know they weren't called that back then. But um, does anyone want to start? I can start. I think that generally, us Filipinos are very tolerant. I think they're more, for me, my opinion is that they are more celebrating and accepting with gay men, like the baklas and all that. They celebrate them more because they're more visible in the entertainment industry and they're very like creative and like 
comedians, but with like the lesbians, there's not so much of visibility. And I, my perception is like, in general, people are more like scared with the lesbians, the tomboys. That, that, that's, I think that's my perception. And you might be right, because if I kind of go back in, in my childhood years, and I don't really have a great memory, <laughs> I did have a relative, or he was adopted. His name, it's, it's a weird name, Lodi Mark. And I'm saying that with an English accent, but you know, in, 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 in Ilongo, it's Lodi Mark. <laughs> and, and he was an adopted child by my grandma. And we always thought he was gay because he would always put flowers in his hair. And, and mind you, I'm talking about like my childhood memories. He would always uh, put flower in his hair and he would always put his hand on his hip. And the uncles would make fun of him, but in like a, a fun way, not like a bullying way. And Lodemark would never really get upset or offended. But I don't remember really knowing any lesbian until I was in high school and we had a couple of classmates that were lesbians. So yeah, I think you're right, like in our culture or in, in just in our little village, town, province, whatever you want to call it, that there might have been more visibility with gay men than they were with lesbians. That's what I remember. Anyone else want to share? You know, for me, um, I did have a cousin on my dad's side, so my dad's uh, brother's son, um, he was he was gay. So even from the beginning, um, I I just knew there was that one side which is you know like flamboyant gay. Um, that's how I grew up thinking that all gays were like flamboyant, you know. And the, as you said, putting flowers, joining beauty pageants. They just want to strut their stuff and, and they're loud and funny. Um, and we see that on the uh, um, Filipino celebrities too. So that's my first perception of like the gay people. Okay. It's like yeah. just the men were gay. But I didn't know that women can be called gay too, but they're more lesbians. Right, men? Is that correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So growing up in an all-girls school, we had a lot of like – lesbians per se right because we had like oh my god he's so handsome like growing up um so we idolized this lesbian because they look like men tomboys. But they're like, tomboys they're like good looking so that was my my lesbian encounter growing up having those um lesbians in school and then now nowadays i didn't even like know about bisexual transgender or even queer until like in my adult years so those are my pretty close memories just the gay man and the lesbians were my closest memories growing up anyone else want to share any childhood memories of how lgbtq was like in your first encounters oh pal did you have anything sorry well on my end i think gays lesbians they're like growing up for me it's just normal being like it didn't change anything because my dad's sister, she's lesbian and it was just like, it was normal. Nothing changed. She's still a human being to me. And then the, my cousin from my dad's side, he's like one of my closest cousin. He's gay. So it was just growing up. I feel like they're accepted already in our community. And then also growing up, during my high school, uh, college years, I grew up with my cheering team. Most of them are gays. For me, they're just all the same. I don't distinguish them. Oh, this person is gay. For me, all of them are the same. We are all equal. And up until now, when I'm here in America, because every like it's a big deal here. But in my perspective, it's it's okay because I've been growing up together with those people. Yeah. So yeah. So who were like the LGBTQ like influence or pop influence that we had growing up that you guys can remember? I know there's a couple of them that are that have come out now that we didn't know they were gay back then. (laughs) So who are those role models like not role models, but someone that you looked up to that was like famous that that were in the LGBTQ? Does anyone want to go first? I think. The LGBTQ icon that I look up to is Monique Wilson. 
Is she really? She? Yeah, she is. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, Monique yeah. Wilson. Monique yeah. Wilson, uh, she was one of the first casts of Miss Saigon with mm-hmm. Leah Salonga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's a great role model because she contributed to to the arts, to the musical Miss Saigon, and she eventually came out. So she's like a positive role model for me. And I have a follow-up question with that, Meg. When did, she, when, when did that person become a positive role model for you? Like, when was that? When did that epiphany come to life? When she came out. Because back then, she was already known in the entertainment industry. And when, when I heard that she came out, like, oh, wow, there's... Because it's, it's not so much common with the lesbian community. I mean, in the Philippines, in, from my own knowledge. What, when did she come out? I think 2000s, like early 2000s, between 2000 to 2010, somewhere over that year. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't, you know, because I'm not in the category, it's not to say that I really have role models who are LGBTQ, but there are some, and and I want to see if Joy and Pauline would have these too, but I have some of those that I was shocked to find out that they were gay or that they were lesbians or that they were bisexual or whatever. And I want to say, ugh, I cannot think of his name, but it's the actor from Prison Break. Um, um, shoot, what is his name? Okay, now I'm going to go on my phone. For those of you listening, you're probably saying his name right now and I can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I know who you mean. He was like this good looking heartthrob. Oh yes. And all of a sudden, what? He's gay? Yeah, and his Michael Schofield was his like Schofield. Wentworth Miller. Yes. Wentworth Miller. Thank you. If there was any person that came out as gay that I was disappointed or upset personally, it was him. (laughs) Because I don't know why. I had a crush on him. I watched the entire season of Prison Break. And this was recent because I never really knew about Prison Break. He's really cute. Um, Oh my gosh. He's really cute. Yes. He is very cute. Yes. So when I found out that, you know, I crushed on him the entire the entire show, and then I found out he was gay. I was, like, so heartbroken. And I don't know why, as if I had a chance or a shot. I mean, you never know. But <laughs> but I think that was one person that I was, like, shocked to find out that he was gay. Does anyone else have that, like, moment where you liked, you know, a pop star or someone that you were surprised to find out that they were in the LGBTQ fan? Not me personally, but... My sister, I don't know if she'll admit this, but she used to have a huge crush on this Filipino actor who is apparently dead now. Um, his name is Rostom Padilla. So he was... I'm dead. <laughs> no, Rostom Padilla is dead, but E.B. Gandamhari is alive. Okay? Oh, so, so he came out as another person. Yes, no, because he's a transgen- she is a transgender. I did not know that. He is. She. Yeah. Hold on. Let me break the news. Okay. Rustin Padilla was a Filipino heartthrob. He's this fair skinned brother of an action star that back in the day, she he was in a love team with this Carmina Villarreal. They were together. They were apparently married. They were married. And they broke they off. And then he came out in the early 2000s, or I don't even remember, that he said that Rustum Padilla, which is like his birth person and name, dead. And she's now saying that Bibi Gandanghari, which is her name now, has Can we show back. pictures? Because I have pictures right now. Um, you can show the pictures of Bibi Gandanghari now, if you, if you is, have it. This is him before. Yes, look at him. Yeah, I guess you guys can Google them. So if you guys are watching us, if you guys are wa- listen, if you guys are watching us on YouTube, this is Rostom Padilla. Um, I'm sharing my screen right now. This is Rostom Padilla, right? That's him. Yeah, that's him. Mm-hmm. But look at her now. This is a before and after. But now, but look at the now though. She's so pretty. Okay, See, there you go. Look at her now. Oh, right there. Well, yeah, kind of, but she's really 
like all dolled up and everything now. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you can look her up some more oh, later she, on. Right here. Look at her. Look at her. There you go. Wow. You know, you she's pretty. Sorry, hold on. I come on. She's like tall. She's skinny. Wow. There this go. is breaking news to me, Joy. I did not. All right. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yes. And you Isn't know, that crazy. You know what? For Americans um, who aren't Filipinos, they always have this thing about not thing, but they like Asians are known to be really good at transforming themselves into like this beautiful women when they're, you know, when they make that transformation, like, have you guys, if you guys seen like people from Thailand, from Vietnam, like just how they transform. Yeah. Even if they're not transgendered, even if they're just, what do you call that Meg? If they're just drag, drag, drag. if you're, they're just dragging, <laughs> like, I think maybe because of the petite, bodies of Asians yeah. but I've seen drags here in America and they're they're huge so you could tell they're drag queens or whatever yeah. but like I feel like the Asians the Asian men who drag or who, who do the drag thing or like transform like they look like women it's ridiculous it's cra- isn't it crazy yeah that's awesome anyone else have breaking news breaking news <laughs> you know what I, I do want to say something and this is it, to piggyback on what Meg said about, you know, how people treat gays versus lesbians. Maybe this is just back home. or Maybe it's true here, too. But Cherise Pempenko, like, how is her career not doing well because she came out? I feel like it's because she came out. Like, what, what is yeah. your opinion? On? So Cherise Pempenko is one of the really famous singers. She's been on Ellen. Did she, was she ever on Oprah? She was on Oprah. She was with Oprah. Yeah, yeah she, she was, was with Oprah. Oprah. And when she, I think when she made her first appearances, she did not come she out blew up. No, no, no. Yeah, and then she was able to sing with, um, what, who's that famous? Celine Dion. Celine Dion and the other famous, like, op- Oprah. Oprah. Um, Andrea Bocelli? Yes, that one. Um so she's a Filipino star and she won so many like um so many singing uh competitions. She and was then- on Glee too. She yeah, was she on Glee? Was on Glee. Wow. She, yeah, she, she went Glee. to Glee, yeah. But remember, she's not a she now. She's a he. He's a he. He's a he. I mean, that's so, so he's a he. I wanna get a get Meg's take on that. Like my mom and I were talking about this, and and my mom, okay, I don't wanna put my mom on the spot, but I feel like this might be true for most adults, like Filipino traditional adults or the titas out there. The you know? titas, yes, yeah. And mm-hmm. this is how they say it. Like, oh, it's too bad she did that. Now her career is not no good. Like, that's, I feel like that's a true statement from a lot of titas that may not be saying it out loud, may not be saying it out loud, but that's what they might be thinking. So I want to get Meg's take on that. Like, what do you mm-hmm. think? Yeah, that's, I think it's a generational thing, generational and religious thing. Because, you know, our generation is more open as compared to theirs that they have like these prejudices against like lesbians and they're like very proud when it comes to flamboyant gays because they're entertaining, they're fun and all that. But when it comes to, like, someone that's a lesbian, which not all people are, you know, it it makes a difference if you know someone personally because it changes your perspective, I guess. Not all, but that I think that's my take on that. As compared to, like, you just know, uh, you just see people, like, on the TV or on the street, it's different when you know a person, like your friend or family member or a coworker. So that's my so take on it. My, my, my second part of that question for you is, why do you think Sharice is Pempenko? And, and, and I'm, I'm focusing on one person, but it, it might be true for others. It's like, you know, why do you think her career isn't making as much noise as, as it was when she made a transformation to be a he now. 
like what do you think like just your opinion i know you don't know really what's going on but like what is your opinion about it our opinion or just meg's or anyone's anyone's? well i think it's because therese when she became popular she was therese she was this cutesy teeny bopper she had that image you know that people loved and accepted and you know now when she transitioned i think people just got I don't know, confused maybe? Like, that's not the person that I looked up to, that I enjoyed watching. It's like a to- wholly, totally different persona, you know? So I feel like people sometimes got confused. Opinion, they're like, this is not who I who I looked up to. So it's, they just change, you know? Yeah. It's like, I don't but know. Pretty hard for them to kind of transition into that change. Correct, and, correct. And ac- accept that it's a different person. I'm sure she can sing just as well. Of course. But you know, this is the entertainment industry and people are very visual. If it's just voice and singing, that's perfectly fine. But she banked on being on Oprah and Ellen and people saw her visually as this teeny bopper. And all of a sudden you change from that to someone who's almost unrecognizable. It probably took time for people to accept her the way it was plus she did not get a lot of probably offers and we have to be honest like people are still kind of judgmental and biased with their um views and opinions and yeah Yeah. it's a shame it's too bad i think it's also society's expectation of roles that they're used of her playing this role part of they they've known her being this heterosexual straight woman but then that's how they expected her to be but now because she's she has came out as the person that she is oh, he 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 is sorry thank you they don't i guess i don't know it's like acceptance i guess as well that's I, I think that's what I think. You know, to me, also my opinion regarding that matter is she was very famous when she was singing as a girl. But then you got to remember some Filipinos, this is sad, but it's true. Some Filipinos, they don't accept that gender, like the change of gender. They don't accept, like, especially like, gender. yeah, especially when um, older people, like the older generation, they're very traditional. So who are the fans? Most of the fans that always watch TV, uh, always watch the media, those titas that are very traditional. So they, I think it's more of like some of them, they're not um, very liberated. Like us, we can just adapt to to it okay she changed her gender that's fine but some of it yeah and of course through those influence also to the kids oh no because she changed her gender this is just another aspect i'm not saying all of the titas all of the filipinos are like this but sometimes also it's because it's not accepted in the community back in the philippines some of it, yeah, but I'm not saying all of it. But like, you know, to us, it's okay. But some other Filipinos, it's different. Right. So before we before we move on to the next topic, I do want to share my screen. So if you guys are watching us on YouTube, you get to see the transformation from Sharice Bimpenko. Does she have a new? Oh, Jake Cyrus. Jake Cyrus. Cyrus is now her. So Meg or Joy or somebody, do you guys know if she actually did the sexual transformation? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know either. I don't think so. Shoot, but it's crazy. I'm buying it. She even has facial hair. She did that mm-hmm. that part of transformation you can see. So I want to go into uh, the next topic of uh, today's episode, which is um, social issues of LGBTQ, you know, the rights, the right to uh, marriage, and all of the other issues that have been coming up lately. But I want to start with marriage. I want to put Meg on the spot because Meg actually did get married. So um, <laughs> in the past, but we're going to talk about, you know, Meg, what, um, what was your experience like going through the process of getting married to the same gender? Tell, tell the audience, you have the floor. Well, first of all, 
when I was a kid, I would I did not ever conceive the idea of getting married with another woman. But then after all of the marriage equality that transpired all over the world, like I believe it's possible. And when I got married in the past, I can't believe that I was getting married. It, it's getting real. But for me, it was like I had the privilege and the right to be married because all of the other countries don't accept gay marriage, and especially in the Philippines, which is not legal. So I felt like I was privileged enough to have that that right to get married. I totally hear you, Meg. So like for you, that experience, regardless of its results, right? We're going to talk about that like maybe later. <laughs> regardless of its results that you... I can laugh at it now. Huh, I'm sorry? I can laugh at it now. You can laugh, totally. Yeah. We'll all laugh at it. Um, yeah. But regardless of the results of that marriage, it was a privilege to you that in this lifetime, you were able to use your humane right to marry another, whoever, whomever you loved at that time, you know, that to yes. marry that person, whether it's a girl, a guy, whatever, but for you, it was another woman and to be able to exercise that. And, to, and tell us, what, where did you get married, Meg? I got married in Spain, in Madrid, uh, Are you a couple years us? ago. Are you asking us? A <laughs> couple years ago. Uh-huh. And uh, my, my question back to you guys, what, like what were your, when you guys, how did you hear or how did you guys find out that I was about to get married? What was like your reactions? I want to hear that. Well, I felt like I was there every step of the way for WhatsApp. So it wasn't a shock. So I was, I was happy for you and you know, that you were settling down and found love and, and getting married. And, you know, so that was my first reaction. I was just happy for you. Same here. We're very happy for you. I was surprised. We were were very happy for you. Past tense. Yeah. I was surprised because I visited you in Madrid. And at that time, you were still, like, venting about your ex. So then then I found out you're getting married. Like, whoa, when did that happen? (laughs) So for me, I was not, not because of the gay marriage. I was just surprised that it was, you know, you were marrying somebody. So... With that said, Meg, do you know which states in America still ban same-sex marriage? I was just Googling it right now, too. I think there are still some states in um, the United States that still do not allow gay marriages, which then encourages gays and lesbians to go to a different state and get married, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I did not not do my research. Oh, no, (laughs) I'm just Googling it now. And I think it says Indiana is one of those states. Oh, Indiana, Joy. Indiana. <laughs> Indiana. That's how we say it in our... Uh, I, here's my question. Sorry, I, I'm like taking it over. Um, it over. Do you guys think that, will it ever come a time that there will be marriage equality in the Philippines? There isn't one, obviously, right now, right? I don't even no, know. No, there, there is none. There is none. <laughs> I, I, to me, I think... As long as the Catholic um, religion is dominating the Philippines, it would be a challenge to legalize that unless the state overrules all this um, religion. Yeah, I feel you. So, yeah. so right now, just as a reminder, if you guys are not Filipinos, that Catholicism definitely runs the entire country. Well, not the entire country, but the um, majority of the government. So there's no divorce <laughs> in the Philippines? Yeah. I think Philippines is the only country that does not legalize divorce. There's another one. I just can't remember. because I Vatican. Remember. Huh? Vatican. Oh, I, I don't know. I know there was another one because I was speaking with someone and they said, yeah, our country doesn't either. But I, I didn't remember who that was. So, yeah, we don't we don't allow divorce and we don't allow gay marriages at this time. And my take on that, I don't think it will ever happen 
because I think that when the church overruns the government, that they are going to protect it with their dear life. So I don't think that it will ever happen in the Philippines. I think that people would have to move to America to a more liberal country to get married. I agree. Yeah. But that doesn't mean they don't live together. I'm sure they are cohabit cohabitation is happening. Yeah. But um, they just don't have the legal rights to and protection for, um, the legal protection for their spouses, like just a heterosexual relationship has, you know. So I, I'm gonna I want to discuss something in the recent news about, um, and I'm going to give the floor to Meg to tell us briefly about the recent case of a trans woman being murdered. So you want to, Meg, tell us about this one case. There's this um, transgender woman, Jennifer Lode, I think. Um, she was murdered by a military member. And this military person um, got imprisoned in the Philippines. Oh, and it happened in the Philippines? It happened in the Philippines. And uh, he got imprisoned there. And I, I, I'm not sure if he was acquitted or he's just gonna... I think Duterte pardoned him. And they say that it, he's gonna be acquitted or he's just going to be moved here in the States. So what do you guys think about, because there are actually the Philippines has, is like part of the like top countries that transgendered people are being murdered. Really? A lot of trans, transgendered people are being murdered. And are they like burying those cases and not like, and, and not giving it justice? I'm assuming yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're being murdered where... because they're transgender. They're, they're transgendered, yes. So I mean, for me, the way I think about it, it's still murder. So no matter what, if you're in the states or you're in the Philippines, you have to suffer the consequences of of what you did, right? So if that person is going to be transferred here in America, he still has to do to suffer the consequences and what he did back in the Philippines. So he need like uh, for me. I mean, don't move him here. I mean, let him suffer what he did. I and mean, just no matter what, even though it's transgender or not, it's still a human being that he killed. Yeah, I think that that he did the crime back in the Philippines, and he should be tried in the mm -hmm. Philippines, and then he should serve his sentence in the Philippines, so he could go to jail in the Philippines, where there might be more transgendered people there, and that he could get himself <laughs> used to the idea of having transgendered friends. I don't know. But um, good luck to him because he might not survive prison in the Philippines if he gets imprisoned there and stays yeah. there. Yeah. Maybe that's the reason why they're letting him go. <laughs> He's not going to survive it back home. I, I can only imagine the, the, you know, the difference of, you know, Philippine prison versus American prison. Yeah. My opinion on that is that, yes, I agree that he, he has to do his sentence in the Philippines because when he will be moved here in the States, he will have his first world privileges Correct. as compared to our third world uh, imprisonment system. Correct. So he did his crime in the Philippines. He should pay in the Philippines. Right. Oh my gosh. And I, I'm sure there's so many more cases out there that we don't even know about. And I think that all of us here on the podcast, we're still technically millennials. We might be the last like year. Yes, we are. To be honest with you, we are millennials. We are. So. I think because I think it stops yes, in our year. Yeah. If you're born in 83, you're, I think that's the last millennial year before it moves on to the earlier generation. No, 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 no. Where we start, yeah, 83, like start and then like 20s. And then it, after that, it's like the Z generation. Z generation. Yeah, Z. centennials, millennials, and then centennials. So it starts what year? So from 1983 till 2020? 82, 83, something like that. Not 2020. The 2020 is already Z. Uh, so it stops where? Sorry, Generation Z. It stops where? From 1982, 83 till when? 
It's actually, millennials are actually anyone born between 1981 and 1996. Oh, okay. 1996. 1981, I thought we were the last leg, but that's that's according to whatever I just Googled. <laughs> so after, after that, after 19... 19- 1996, it's generation. generations. Um, and also they call it, I think, centennials. Um, so anyway, back to our topic. <laughs> we got um, sidetracked there. Okay. What I was saying is that we're, you know, the millennials, which is our generation, is a little bit more open-minded than the gener- uh, baby boomers or, you know, even the generation before that. So even though we're open-minded, I personally feel like I'm still always learning about, especially about LGBTQ. Um, one time I was speaking at a, uh, somewhere and I got it. And, you know, sometimes your mind just plays tricks on you. And I'm like, LGBT, like, I just got it all confused. <laughs> what letters comes next? But I'm still open minded and I'm willing to learn. For example, the binary people, the ones that don't call themselves a he or she, I was one time watching an Instagram live and they were matching people up. And this guy came on the Instagram live and they were like, what are you looking for? And he was like, anyone doesn't matter as long as it's a human being. And I'm like, I still have to wrap my mind around that, obviously, because I'm straight. And so it's like, what well, I wonder what it feels like to be attracted to both sex. I mean, I'm, first of all, I'm like, one, if that's you, like you're binary or bisexual, you have just way more options. <laughs> That's what I was thinking to myself. Um, but two, I just, you know, I, I'm not attracted to to same sex. So it's like, I just can't imagine that. And so I guess with that, you know, in mind, like, what are still some of the things that, even for Meg, you know, that's still a learning curve for you um, when it comes to the LGBTQ community? Um, for Joy, for Pal, like, what are still some of those moments that is still stretching your mind to open up about the community? For me, this recent, the recent, like the gender non-binary thing, uh, the the use of pronouns now. You have to be particular with the use of the pronouns. Some people now, like you put on your Instagram, what's your pronoun? So like like yeah. those kind of things. It's, you know, it's evolving. Like some, some like don't even want to be labeled. True. So piggybacking to the pronouns, I work at a urology floor in my hospital and we do post-op care for transgender surgeries. We have one of the best uh, transgender surgeons in Southern, uh, like in California. My hospital absorbed that surgeon to work um, on our hospital and he works on our floor. And so our unit is the only unit amongst the whole hospital that takes care of this transgender surgeries. So my learning curve has like really gone from zero to like a hundred real quick. Um, They just started like maybe a couple years ago. So this doctor, his name is Dr. Garcia. He's, He's really good. He's very particular about pronouns that you need to make sure that whoever you're taking care of it, that you, say the right pronouns, you know, otherwise he will get you in trouble. He will talk to your manager and tell, you know, that, you know, you have to know your game. So it's so hard to most of the Filipino nurses that work on our floor because they get so confused. So a lot of the nurses are like, do not assign me to that patient. Not because they don't want to take care of the patients it's because they just don't want to get in trouble because they could call a, a he person, a she. They're afraid to mess not up. because intentional. It's just because, like what we talked about, that we only have one pronouns for both females and males back in the P- Philippines, and we call everyone sha. You know, there's no he or she. So it's so confusing to train the brain to like you know speak whatever is right. So I think right now it's there's a lot of physiological learning for me how the body goes through the transformation, because I see it firsthand from a female to a male, what their body goes through, all the stages, and then from a male to a female. So you see this transformation firsthand visually, physically. So it's just awesome to see the changes. And it's also awesome to see the reactions of this patient seeing 
that they are liberated liberated and they are in the body that they want to be from the get-go i have a so question that for me is very interesting part of my adult life now which just happened recently so that's my uh, share that's so interesting joy i didn't know mm-hmm. that but question yeah to joy or whoever can answer it so if if a gay guy wants to change the anatomy uh, the anatomy What if he doesn't want to, but he had a boob, boob job? So what, is he still a transgender? Do you yeah, consider? I think so. He so. needs to be changed down there. They have the options, um, I think, to change think, down there or not. I think I get Pao's question. Like, at what point are they officially a transgender? When they get a boob job or when they get their genitals changed too? Yeah, I don't know. I think that it depends. It's not about... The anatomy, uh-huh. it's about who they feel they are. Even if someone has had their um, physically like upper part changed, but in the bottom part has not, it doesn't mean that he's not a guy or a girl. I think it's what's inside. So, I mean, the thing is, but what you see down there, oh my God, this is, I, I'm a woman, but I see a thing down there. Isn't that confusing? Yeah, that's the part that I'm confused. Like, so how do you distinguish a transgender? We need to have a, a trans person be on our show for us. Oh yeah, I know someone. What Filipino? Filipino America? Uh, Filipino? Yeah. We have to schedule that. Um, so you guys listening to this, we're going to schedule an episode where we have the transgender on, I think, because I have questions too. I so definitely, he, yeah. I, have a friend I, 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 can, I have a friend who's FTM and then the best friend of my cousin is MTM, who's also a nurse. Oh, male to female and female to male. I'm like, what is that? FM radio? I know. I'm like, huh? I, it is confusing. I mean, I'm I'm not going to lie. I'm open to accepting whoever people are around me, you know? But it is confusing. And it's always like, you know, for anyone who is listening to our podcast who identify as transgender, binary, or anything like that, just be I'd say I'm asking for the rest on behalf of my Filipino people. Be patient with us because we actually don't even get our pronouns right to begin with. <laughs> so if we call you he, you're supposed to be a she. We don't mean to offend. We just really get it wrong. I mean, that's my one, two cents out of this. Yeah. Um, but, but Pao, did, we, didn't really, we don't really have the answer to your question, but I think that, that was a great one. Um, and I know Meg was explaining that it really depends on how people feel. But I think Pao was asking, like, technically, when are you a transgender? Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah. I mean, just based on the word, word transgender. So when do you become that other gen- gender? When you complete the transformation or I don't know. So I'm just curious though, because I have friends that like, you know, they had their boob job, but down there it's still the same. And I have friends also, they changed the whole entire thing. So uh, it's just a little question, like how do you distinguish which one is yeah. which? Uh, Meg, we're we're gonna have to give that to you to schedule another one with transgenders on our podcast for sure. And I want to close this out by asking Meg this question. Actually, is um, how did you feel when you came out? Like, how were your family supportive? Were were your friends supportive? Like, just tell us that story to close us out today. First, with my parents with my mom first back in college she thought it was just a face and she just kind of like brushed it off and we didn't talk about it anymore um with my friends i was kind of like scared of telling them that i am gay and then my cousins i i was scared of being rejected but at the end My thing is that I am very grateful and thankful that my friends and family are very accepting and loving. And I am very grateful for that. Well, Meg, we love you. I know Joy loves you. Pauline loves you. Kat loves you. (laughs) We love you. And anyone that messes with you is our enemy. 
Okay. Thank you. <laughs> A message. Yeah, we love you, Meg. We love you, Dai. Oh, I love you, Dai. We love you, Dai. And so we wrap up this episode of our LGBTQ History Awareness Month. It wasn't quite a discussion about history, but I think that we tackled what was more important was, you know, our personal viewpoints and Meg's personal um, experiences and Joy's experiences in the hospital and the transgender, um, you know, department. Is that what we call it? We have two local businesses. Uh oh. <laughs> and then so um, and Pauline's Pauline's openness because of all the friends that she has. So we are excited to bring this back sometime in the future to have transgender guests on our podcast. Um, and we thank you guys for listening in today and see you on the next episode. See you. Thank you for watching another episode of All Abroad Podcast. If you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platforms, don't forget to rate us and send us your feedback and comments. If you're watching us on YouTube in our channel, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and send us your feedback of topics that you want us to discuss. Until the next episode of All Abroad Podcast.